Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. I'm joined on the couch as always with my co-host Sally Sanders and Dave Sigworth of Maritime Aquarium in, New in Norwalk. Dave, welcome to the couch. Is this your first time here sitting with I, us? I, it is the first time on this set. I've been, yeah, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a, a, a brew, there was a brew pub brewery, stop, yes. right? Yeah, which, that was a fun time. Yes, yeah, so it was. <laughs> Yeah. Next time we'll get you at the brewery. Okay, I was but looking for to the couch. I, nothing it's, on the it's fun yeah. here. No, no mugs here. Of yeah, no mugs. Okay. Right. No, no. <laughs> Not today. So you've got a full lineup of fall activities going on at the aquarium. It's We'd, a good time of year to be there to see the uh, animals. It is like we and there's always things going on at the Maritime Aquarium, but um, because of the, the season, we're having uh, the aquarium is turning into the Aquascarium. Uh, <laughs> it has turned, right? It, it has your turned. First weekend. We had our first weekend last weekend, and then uh, we continue with this weekend. And although it's Aquascarium, it's not really scary. We're, we're it's not we haven't turned into a haunted house, but we've just decorated for you the season. Off the lights. We haven't turned down <laughs> the lights or anything. Fishes, uh, there are skull. we are certainly decorated for the holiday um, but we're not um, we don't want uh, anyone to come or fear that uh, that they're going to come through and be scared by anything so it's, it's, not a haunted house. it's more for fun yeah. um, so as all, all ages um, but the the best part of it is if um, if you if your child comes in costume we will let them in for free um, and so it's uh, one free child in costume with every paying adult. So a family of four, two kids, two adults, both children get in for free uh, as, as long as they come in costume. And we encourage the adults to come in costume as well. And they don't have to be dressed as animals, right? <laughs> yeah, that could be confusing. Um, so uh, um, yeah, so anything. And, um, and uh, there's all sorts of events associated with it. There's gonna be face painting. So even if you come in costume, but your face is uh, not masked or anything, that you can have your face painted. And, and we have a, a really good face painter. It's um, Faces by Wells, it's a woman from Granite she does just remarkable jobs. Uh -huh. um, there's a, we, we'll have a dragon on the loose. One of our bearded dragons from the dragons How exhibit big will be out. The dragon? He's they're about two feet long or uh -huh. so. They're bearded dragons. They're very chill. Um, and so you can um, either just touch it, or if you feel a bit more comfortable, maybe even have uh, one of our crests put it on your shoulder for photos and things like that. So dragons are out. Um, there's um, pumpkin carving, pumpkin decorating that you can do for a small extra fee. And um, I think that's about it. Do oh, oh, is there trick or treating? In I'm sorry. Thank you, Sal. Yes, yeah. there's safe trick or treating. So we have all sorts of stations set up. You'll get a map when you come in uh, about where the stations are, and, and it's safe trick or treating for kids as well. So uh, last weekend was a great chance for you to try out your child's costume to see, you know, how they can see, how they get along, how they look, make some alterations, make some for, alterations for this Monday. coming weekend, yeah. and um, and so uh, again, come this weekend to the aquarium and, and try it out. Get some extra candy before you go trick or treating on. Um, because every kid needs more candy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is the time. So. Uh, any special divers in the tanks? With the um, we will have divers in this weekend, and we talked about trying to see if they could um, take pumpkins in with them, um, and maybe even do pumpkin carving. Or, or go in, as, in a costume. In a costume. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll save that for an, another Someone upcoming season. Aquaman or something. Well, right? we, ha we, well we have we do have special. Uh, we have Santa. Santa will dive right, with us. Okay, um, so right. hang on for that one. <laughs> But um, we were, anyway, we were worried about if they tried to do some carving of pumpkins in the tank with the sharks, that maybe that might set off uh, too many seeds, pumpkin seeds, things like that, that would get in the filtration system, which seemed like a challenge for us. So um, no uh, extra things. But the divers will be going in. And, uh -huh. and this is in our big shark tank with the eight-foot sand tiger sharks. Um, it's a chance for guests to interact with them. You can ask them questions, find out why the sharks aren't tearing them limb from limb, because <laughs> that's not the way sharks are. Uh, so it's a way for us to dispel those myths about sharks. Yeah, and you also feed the seals every... Seal feeding is three so times a day, 11.45, 1.45, 3.45. So. Yeah. And we've been promoting that a little bit. The seals seem to be game for us to put things like witches' hats on their <laughs> heads. So if you check out the Aquarium Facebook page, you'll see us um, promoting the Aquascarium that way as well. And, you know, we can put the most serious thing about the health of Long Island Sound and other our educational programs and all sorts of things that we really do at the Aquarium on our Facebook page. But the things that always get the most reactions... <laughs> are the seals wearing yeah, you put hats. Seals wearing hats, so... Yeah. 
Yeah. So we'll keep doing it. So uh, there, there's some changes coming up at the uh, aquarium. I've been reading about the IMAX theater and, and what are, may be happening. Right. So if you're not familiar with the aquarium, uh, right at the south end of the main uh, aquarium building itself, the historic part of our um, facility, uh, is the railroad line, the Metro North and Amtrak train line. And then the IMAX theater is on the other side of that. That was built new when we opened in 1988. And because the bridge as it goes over, the railroad bridge as it goes over the river is, has been failing a few times, and then always conveniently on Friday at rush hour, uh, <laughs> it's a swing bridge. It opens up to let sailboats and barges go out. They've decided that they're going to have to replace the bridge. It's about 100 years old, right? It, Grover Cleveland was president, I think, <laughs> when it was built. 22nd so. or 24th? President oh, twice. interesting. <laughs> ah, uh. <laughs> I'll have to look one up. That's a good one. I didn't think about that. I think it was built in like 1880 something. So whichever that was, 80. I don't know. Now you got it's me. It's hard Steve. to tell because McKinley was 25th and he was turn of the century president. Oh, yeah. Got me. Um, I'm throwing way anyway, too many historical Anyway, it's an old here. bridge. Yeah. It's a really old bridge, and so they are going to have to replace it. And because it it slices so thinly on both sides of our yeah, facilities. If you, if you visit, it's it's just like right in the yeah. middle of it. So um, they need wiggle room to, because as they work on the bridge replacement, they're going to have to keep the train lines open, of course. Mm -hmm. So to give them some play, um, they are going to have to take the IMAX theater down. Oh so um, this won't be for another year or so, and we're, um, we still have a... And there's a picture of the bridge there on our screen. There you go, that's the bridge. Right. Um, and, and you got so, your campus right there as you were just describing it. Exactly. So that's us on the left. The IMAX theater is a the large building to the left, the, the, the lower side of the bridge there. And so um, a replacement will come, and it, it won't be for another year or so. We still have a whole lineup um, of movies set at least through Labor Day of 2017, uh, and some of them we're pretty excited about. There's one opening in February called Dream Big, which is very STEM-related. Um, oh. So we think teachers are going to be very excited about that movie. It's now STEAM. It an will be major. well. Well, this one it is. I, I understand, correct, but I think this one is more STEM. STEM, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, more engineering. More engineering, focused on that, and just how where ideas come from. Which so we think the teachers are going to really like that movie as well. And it's um, a great IMAX theater. I was there a couple of years ago. We did. My girlfriend and I saw the butterfly. The butterfly. Uh, the flight of the butterflies. Yeah, so. yeah, it great. It's the first IMAX theater in Connecticut, and it's still the largest. So it's six stories tall. Um, so um, although that's that sounds disappointing and scary that we're going to lose our theater, we, we are working and negotiating still with the state, deep, and other officials to. Um, uh, to find some replacement because they understand that this is a, a blow to our offerings. Uh, it's important um, to our uh, vitality to have um, some sort of theater yeah, like that, that. That's a part of your budget that you can't. Exactly. You know. so we, so, and they understand that, that the whole bridge project is going to be a dent in perhaps our attendance and our, um, our, um, our, our finances. So um, uh, we're working to figure out how we can replace that and where we could put some other theater um, uh, to the point that uh, even before they take uh, the IMAX theater down, hopefully we can begin to build some new replacement. And so there on may be... On-site or would it be on-site? On yeah, on-site. Um, so even though there may be a little period where we wouldn't have a theater of some sort, it hopefully wouldn't be that long before the next How theater will opens. How impact your dock, too? Is that going to be... The dock will have to be moved, yeah. at least temporarily, while the bridge construction works. So um, this is our Spirit of the Sound, our um, hybrid electric um, research vessel that uh, we do research with and also take public uh, cruises and school groups out on. And we think that they can just dock that on the other side of maybe the Straffolino, the, the, the um, vehicular drawbridge. Um, so south. Correct. Yeah. Um, and so um, we'll just get the school groups and other people on board um, probably there. But again, all this is, we're still waiting for a lot of details it, about yeah, it. It's all about this pesky bridge. This, is this darn it's bridge, been yeah. going on for years now, the discussion of how to do it. Right, so. right. And there's a public hearing, I think, on November 17th. Uh, to get uh, input on the plan for how the bridge will be developed um, because it's not impacting just the aquarium and there's a lot of people in yeah. the neighborhood who, who are feeling sure. the effects of it um, because it's such a major project. So. Yeah. And the programming has to go on though. After Halloween you've got a special uh, morning se sensory program. Since we're right, so there, you know there, um, the aquarium is um, there's a lot going on uh, that feed all of your senses. Colors, um, sensations, movement, things like that. And for, for um, I was going to say children, but also adults with sensory processing difficulties, that can be sort of an overload for them. And so there are families that may try, actually, unfortunately, have to avoid places like the aquarium because it's just too much. Um, and so on Sunday, November 6th, we're going to turn things down a little bit. We're going to have our lights muted, sounds will be off, uh, only sounds that are necessary. 
and um, we're going to open early. So if if you as a family feel uncomfortable putting you know someone in your family with sensory processing difficulties out into the public. Um, uh, we'll, uh, we're going to open early, so it would just be you there only, um, or people uh, in similar situations to, to understand. To yeah. understand, yeah. and and, um, and so we'll open at eight instead of ten a.m. So um, with all these muted sounds, our our IMAX theater, we're going to show some specially selected movies that more sort of fit um, uh, to work for those families, and we'll have the lights in the theater actually a little brighter. So that's the opposite. Rather than having things dimmer Darker, in, the, in yeah. the aquarium, it's going to be, or in the, I'm sorry, in the IMAX theater, they'll be a little brighter, and we won't have the volume of the movie on quite so loud. So um, we're just trying. We know that there's there's families out there who um, who wish they could come to the aquarium, and um, we're trying to accommodate them. You even yeah. offer a quiet room for. There is. If they get, too. if someone like, needs a little bit of a break, yep, overwhelmed, just sort of like go and chill and, and settle down a little bit. Um, and even if that doesn't work, if you if you've only been in the aquarium for a little while and it turns out it's not going to work, you're free to exit and we'll comp you to come back and try it some other day. Uh, but this, there's a segment of the community out there that yeah. um, should be able to enjoy the aquarium, and so we're trying to to reach out to them and make sure they're aware that we're um, very game to work with them. And this is a first year thing. Where we tried can, it. Yeah, we've done it a couple times. I think we started uh, once last April, and we had one in September. So we're going to try and do it about every uh, couple months, mm -hmm. just to uh, give it a chance uh, to make that available to everyone. And it's turned out so far to be popular. I think you know, as word spreads among all those communities and associations, we're trying to put the word out uh, so they become aware of it and can share it with their clients and members. Good. Yeah, it's fun. It's nice. And, and another great thing in, that starts in November and continues right through the holiday season is the uh, lighthouse. The lighthouses. So this is our 15th annual, and we ask people, this is the crazy thing, you know, 15 years ago we thought, hey, you know, um, people decorate lighthouses, real lighthouses, for the holidays. It's sort of a New England tradition to, to decorate a lighthouse. So why don't we decorate with lighthouses? So we build put your out, own. build your own. We put out the call if anyone wants to build model lighthouses and enter this um, exhibit slash contest, um, and they have to be like three to six feet high. There's a few other um, rules about light. It. They, have light. they have to working light. Yeah. They can't have uh, any um, uh, uh, anything that, from a living animal or, or a deceased animal, like shells, even or anything like wow. that. Um, but otherwise, it was uh, anything goes, and so they, some of those they last yeah, year. very creative. Um, and uh, so we put out this call, and every year we've had these amazing lighthouses that um, people come up and decorate. And so, as a guest to the aquarium, you can come, and everyone gets a ballot, and um, you go through the aquarium. They the these now become beacons to light your way through the it's aquarium a lot galleries. Of type of election than the one we're about to have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Although the voting can be quite competitive, you see families standing there yeah. at the poll at loading the little box. <laughs> well, not loading up, but just having debates. Like the children are very adamant about what they thought was the best, where the adults <laughs> have other opinions. So there's big debates about that. But the winner gets 1500 bucks after, um, after the contest slash exhibit ends in mid-January. We tally everything up. There'll be, uh, I think, four or five levels of cash prizes with first place of the most guest votes gets fifteen hundred dollars. We've had a couple winners from Ridgefield at least. We've had right? Nick Parker and Brett Olmstead, both yeah. uh, uh, Ridgefield folks who have entered. Um, there's usually some uh, folks, there's usually one or two from Wilton all around the Fairfield yeah. County area, but there's also people from uh, we've had entries from uh, down in New York, uh, from up in like around the Poughkeepsie area, um, all sorts of places. Um, people either come see it and get inspired and they think, oh, I have a good idea for yeah. a lighthouse. I can do something better than that. Do and you some, cap it at a certain number of people or not? There is, just based on how much space we have in the galleries. So um, we, were, we had it at 20 available this year and um, we just sort of closed the entries and it was going to be 18. We've had someone drop out, so I think it's, there's going to be 17 lighthouses this year. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and people use you know sometimes they're uh, they're modeled after existing lighthouses sure. that you would recognize and sometimes they're just their Crazy. own kind of idea as long as there's a working light on it then there's going to be a lighthouse so and using materials like uh, people have used. Um, Corks and and uh, sugar cookies or uh, <laughs> one, right? there's a couple of years there've been crocheted ones the there's people the uh, yeah edible ones they yes. smell amazing as you walk past those um, uh, um, uh, what was the like something about like dryer filters or some I mean all sorts of crazy <laughs> things that people have fluff used from <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stuff like that well not the fluff but just yeah. Yeah, other kinds of things like that so yeah it's it's the creativity um, that our um, 
entries um, come up with is just amazing that, you know, we feel very lucky that, you know, we don't have to hardly do anything except put out the call and find space for them and display them. And, ah, uh, the work that these people put into it is yeah. really uh, extensive so and amazing. pretty dedicated, I'm sure. Yeah, and there are people, almost usually every year, about two-thirds of the entries, between a half and two-thirds of the entrants are people who have done it year to year. They just, like, have the bug. Families do it. Artists do it. Families do it. Um, artists, we've had, um, there's a guy from White Plains who is a mason by trade who does these amazing uh, uh, stone um, inlay uh, lighthouses. They, they weigh like 200 pounds, wow. um, but they're really beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We're going to keep you on the couch and talk about another project, project. that okay. involves a lot of dedication. All right. And uh, we'll be back. It's the Pumpkin Patch, Jesse Lee and Ridgefield. We're going to talk about some, some special gourd photos that you've <laughs> taken over the years. We'll be right back after the commercial break. We consider ourselves a family business. We follow a lean manufacturing philosophy where we always try to get everybody involved and in continuously improving the company. We've been doing business with Milford Bank for, I'd say, 20 or 25 years now. Um, they work hard to know your business, and they really just give you that personalized attention you need in any of your business or personal banking needs. I'm Paul Hoffman from Orange Research, and I choose to bank with the Milford Bank. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. I'm a filthy rich executive. I hear the markets down a million points. I freak out. I spill my large espresso. The searing pain makes me slam on the brakes. Uh-oh, your fault. And your cut rate insurance may not cover my $90,000 car, so I sue you, because that's what I do. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Visit your local Allstate agent, Nick Montanero, at 6528 Main Street in Trumbull for a personalized quote. Washington Prime, now open on Main Street in Georgetown. Come enjoy our relaxed setting, excellent service, award-winning nightly happy hours, and feast on our creative new American cuisine. Connecticut Magazine's winner for best steak, Washington Prime of Georgetown. The leaves are changing, water temps dropping, and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenik Road, Dairy End, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. We're going to stick with Dave Sigworth. We're going to put a new hat on you, though. You're no longer Maritime Aquarium. You're okay. Jesse Lee Pumpkin Patch <laughs> slash Gourd Photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, one do you want to talk about first? Is the let's, right we, let, let's explain. Jesse Lee United Methodist so Church right. on is Main a, Street in Ridgefield. It's on Main Street in Ridgefield, right on the main drag, a little south of the downtown area. And for years, you know, I've been, our, our family's been going to Jesse Lee for 14 years that I've lived in Ridgefield. And I, long before that, you may know Sally better than I, the church has had a pumpkin patch. And it's a, um, 
It's an uh, annual fundraiser that uh, all the proceeds from the pumpkin patch are split between the church for its missions and also um, an organization out in New Mexico where the pumpkins are grown mm -hmm. that employs like 700 some Navajos. It's on a Navajo reservation. So it's for really um, when you purchase pumpkins at the Jesse Lee Pumpkin Patch, you're really supporting two causes, the, mes the missions of the church and, and the Navajo um, people out in New Mexico. So um, good cause, they're good pumpkins um, and, they're and they're beautiful pumpkins. and it's really a tradition in Richfield, I think, like yeah. to have this our, um, our our front lawn covered with all these pumpkins. And uh, just a caution: we're not like uh, Silverman's or Jones Hill. We don't have hay rides and and pump and pies for sale. It's just pumpkins. It's just there, pumpkins yeah. um, but it's all for a really good cause. But the community does get excited, especially when they do the first drop off. Yeah, there. like uh, we unload like literally like a semi comes from New Mexico. We open up the back door and there's pumpkins stacked to the roof of the semi trailer and the congregation comes out and we do a fireman pass with a fireman brigade right. to unload them all. It's and great to see when, when yeah, that's going on. Yeah, out. it's yeah. really it's really good for your back too. Oh, if you do all yeah. this it's, it's good for your abs. <laughs> I mean, Someone, I oh, I, try the, try doing it for two hours. Yeah, no, but I was, <laughs> I was, I was across the country yeah. to the truck driver. Yeah, That's and and job. and it's funny as you work into the truck, as you get the pumpkins out, then we need more and more people into the truck to yeah. reach where they are, and it's about twenty five degrees warmer in the truck because the pumpkins uh -huh. give off this organic <laughs> warmth. So on, um, usually by the third unload, you know, we have three deliveries. Uh, people want in the truck because by mid October it's a little chilly around, so people actually want to so work. So they brought the New Mexico warmth with them. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There's there's just warmth going on in there. So it's a great tradition. It's, a, it's, um, it's when the, the first time that the pumpkins suddenly appear that our, our church lot uh, yard looks orange, people are like, yes, it's fall. Well, I always notice because first you see the pallets arrive, then yes. you see the fence go up, Yes. and then. And then the pumpkins. pumpkins. So um, it's all for a good cause. And so um, uh, aside from doing some of the promotional yeah. things for social media stuff for the aquarium, um, uh, we all take turns working in the pumpkin patch. And I was there one day working and I was trying to figure out what could we do for the churches, the, the Jesse Lee pumpkin patch Facebook page that would, be, really that would be fun. Yeah. And I had my camera. So we started, I started thinking, well, we could do famous gourds, <laughs> famous Gordons. So I started to go through all the famous Gordons I could come up with, like Gordon Lightfoot and uh, Commissioner Gordon on Batman and things like that. So. Um, when I had the chance, I found some things at home and started making, um, started posing the the gourds as you famous gourds. You have the Gordons. best collection of, of tiny little props for these guys <laughs> too. Um, the Gordon Lightfoot one. I guess we haven't been able to get a picture of, yeah, but we, we, he has a teeny tiny little. There he is. There's your Gordon Lightfoot. Teeny tiny little guitar. Yes, and is, and so uh, my daughter and I play guitar. Not we're not like you know. Gordon great. Lightfoot. We're not great guitar. We're no Gordon Gordon Lightfoots. But we, um, I had things laying around the house. We had a toy Batman. We had a little toy um, guitar and um, other things. We had did Gordon Ramsay. So I just yes. took a, 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 a um, what do you call it? He's not a, a stir. A whisk. Thank you. Uh, so there are easy ways to come up with. And, uh, you and then Gordon Gecko with like a well. Dollar that's the next bill. one. There's still a few more that yeah. Gordon's apparently we haven't touched. Like Gordon Gecko and uh, who was the other one I mentioned to you? Gordon um, uh, uh, OG. Gordon Liddy. Oh, I haven't Liddy, done yeah. uh, some of those. Well, here's Gordon Cooper. There's Gordon Cooper, one of the Mercury 7 astronauts. Yeah. Uh, this is Gordon McRae from the musical Oklahoma, star of stage and screen. Uh, Gordy Howe. Howe. So a lot of these famous, I hope everyone watching is rolling their eyes. There's uh, <laughs> oh, Jeff, Jeff Gordon. That one's great. Um, and uh, so we have fun with it, and um, it got, actually gets really big responses. The, between that and uh, we, uh, the other really good Facebook uh, response we got last year for the Jesse Lee pumpkin patch was uh, as we were unloading, we found a pumpkin that had some sort of dents in it, hard to describe, uh, but it was topical for the year. We decided that it looked like a somewhat deflated pumpkin, so that <laughs> became the Tom, that you? became the Tom Brady pumpkin because uh, it looks somewhat like it had all the air had gone flaky. out of this one pumpkin yes so we posted Richfield. that and that got a lot of response as well so every year people should be uh, following on Facebook the Jesse Lee yes pumpkin the Jesse Lee pumpkin patch yes um, uh, well and when, if we have maybe one more year of Gordon's left and then we'll have to come up with something well, I else think if, if you invite suggestions for, for Gordon's you may you send may them get in more than you know send them in yes yeah. we'll see what we can do <laughs> now you wanted to put your 
Maritime Aquarium had on just a one little bit longer. Yeah, one more thing for the aquarium. So on Wednesday, November 16th, the, uh, we're hosting a public forum on, uh, it's called the Long Island Sound Blue Plan. Uh, and, and, uh, and two years ago, the state legislator signed by uh, Governor Malloy passed this um, charge to um, us all to come up with a plan for Long Island Sound between all the different interests between uh, navigation, uh, recreational fisheries, aquaculture, uh, recreational boating. So if you do any of those things, if you swim, boat, uh, clam, if you are involved in, uh, if you work on the sound, uh, come to the aquarium on, the, on November 16th for the, to hear, learn more about this public forum about the Long Island Sound Blue Plan as we all try and figure out what's the best thing to do, uh, how we can all use the sound, but also uh, with the sound's best interest in mind. Should be interesting. Details, and we love, we would love, love, love if people could um, register online. So there's, a, if you go to the aquarium's uh, um, a website uh, and look under upcoming events, there'll be a place for you to register. So we, just so we know how many people are That's coming. That's org. Correct. And so that's a big one, obviously, mid-November. Right. Yep. So. We're going to keep you on the couch for Under the Sea Movies or now? <laughs> sure. I'll All see right. if I can okay. play along. Dave's a real trooper. <laughs> we're going to head to our next commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our favorite movies that take place under the sea and sticking with the Maritime Aquarium theme of today's show. On time, done right, safe, and reliable. Mr. Handyman CT. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman CT. At Whip Blow Dry Bar and Salon of Ridgefield, it's all about creating a hassle-free, high-end experience for the entire family. Open seven days a week, the makeup and hairstyle salon on Governor Street has it all. From color services, men's haircuts with a complimentary microbrew, affordable kids' cuts, and more. And our blowout package includes a shampoo, scalp massage, blowout of your choice, and a lipstick application done by a celebrity makeup artist. Download the Whip Salon app to view the styles and book appointments. Get more information at whipsalon.com, 203-442-6. Four four four, or find WHIP on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. My property taxes on my single family home were close to $20,000 a year. Now that I've downsized and I'm in a town home, and because of the condo tax laws, my fees have gone from $20,000 down to about $5,300 with the star exemption. There is no other townhome that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. As promised, we're going to be talking about our favorite under-the-sea movies. Now, there's a lot of movies to talk about. Obviously, the main one that comes to mind is Jaws. Isn't it actually an under-the-sea movie? Is it not? What it wasn't think? on my list. Well, there's a few scenes. There's the opening shot, the and opening there's also shot um, when so um, iconic that you can't not include it in the right when and Hooper goes into the cage. Right. So parts of it also there are underwater. So it's a, an above the sea adventure, but it's, it uh, has to deal with under the sea, it's, ocean. It's, so it's, sharks, I think it counts. Sharks live under the sea. Exactly. They definitely do. See, that's our maritime. <laughs> okay. Right now. There you go. Making an official. Making rule. it an official. <laughs> 
Because they people on the couch is a <laughs> yeah. movie ruling. I like it. Good. What are some of your other guys' favorites? Obviously, there's a lot of submarine movies. Well, uh, going back to childhood, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, oh, I think yeah. I, the first submarine movie that I ever saw. And when I was thinking about undersea movies, it seems to me that, what, 85% of them involve submarines. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'd want to, I have the ingredients as combat, claustrophobic, and class, and that yeah. is all dictated based on these submarine movies where it's yeah. war-related subject matter in this claustrophobic environment, and then the class is the rank of... There's a fair number of aliens involved, too, though, <laughs> you know? I mean, you get into the abyss and... Right, and, uh, little sci-fi element. Yeah. Well, the, the under-the-sea genre is not just contained within a war, I mean, a lot of them are, but there is some brevity in it, and you see that a lot with a movie like The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou right. and Bill yeah. Murray. Right, pursuing he, that he animal. He celebrated right. his Cubs getting to the World Series. And, and his was, Mark Twain prize. And his yeah. Mark Twain prize right. last night. I'm anxious to see that. The, yeah. I guess it's going to air Friday, Friday right? Friday, yes. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. and Letterman apparently did a really nice and job. And you've got a connection to the World Series. I being do. A I'm so Cleveland originally from Cleveland. I, um, I, uh, Decided to bite the bullet and uh, prices are crazy, but uh, the chance for my family my dad and my son to all go to the World Series game So we're gonna um, go to game two. So okay. I'm quite excited, excited about that and now, rooting for the Indians. the last time Cleveland was in the World Series was? 97. 97. This was and they uh, won in? 48. 48. Okay, so yeah. they're, they're cursed goes So it's goes been a while. Away. So 95 we got there, we lost, and uh, and then 97 we lost in game seven in extra Marlins. innings. Uh, uh, yeah, painfully. We were, the Cleveland Indians is the only team to get to the World Series in uh, open um, game uh, seven, the ninth inning with the lead and lose. Oh. So, and one of the other Cleveland heartbreaks, but we're sort of rallying with the Cavs have brought us out of uh, our That's misery. True. And so now, the, to see if the Indians can continue it. And so we won't talk about the Browns. We won't talk about the Browns. <laughs> back, yeah. to but, the but back to the sea Back to the We were talking movies. about Life Aquatic, which is, I think, one of my all-time favorites it's, in this genre. It's such an unusual movie, yeah. um, and uh, they did a really nice job with it, so. Um, it's so so Bill Murray, too. Right. Very Bill Murray. Yeah. And it's one of Wes Anderson's best. It's not quite the Royal Tenenbaums, but it's, it's such a unique movie in the way that it's shot and the cast is so good I mean yeah Cape Blanchett is the reporter Angelica Houston's great Willem Dafoe is awesome it just doesn't get much better than that um, Dave what's one of your favorites on well this I was gonna say um, I like Crimson Tide or the hunt for Red October those yeah. are back to your submarine movies so yeah. I mean those would be on my list yeah, so you're a Tom Tom Clancy guy well just it's just really well done I think. right yeah so, yeah. yeah if you're gonna go under the water yeah. time and time again you see these Hollywood legends Sean Connery Gene Hackman they like to get their hands dirty under the right, water, so right, to speak. Right. And one of the one of the themes I had with the class is that they have someone who's underneath them who figures out a problem and reports it up to them. And of course, their idea is this underling is just annoying them and pestering them. So it's right. go back to where you were. Right. And I got to figure that shooting a, a submarine movie is a little bit easier than than shooting a movie underwater, completely in the water, because sure. you can True. have a set. Uh, a submarine can be a set rather than uh, dealing with all the issues of trying to film like Jaws. in water. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. right, which is apparently horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's the great challenges to shoot in the water. I guess another big one is Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Yeah. I don't know if you guys had that at the IMAX. And at the no, we now. did not. Yeah, no. yeah. But those are two that have really recently come to mind as kind of the... Uh, yeah, and you, don't, you don't have to have a submarine, submarine for those either. No, those you don't. Great. They're a lot more lighthearted fare, similar to Life Aquatic. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my all-time favorite in this genre, and it counts, is the spy who loved me. <laughs> Should we get a ruling from Dave on that? Dave, <laughs> ruling. Is it, is it an under-the-sea movie, technically? Absolutely. Parts of it were under the sea, so there you go. <laughs> Look at that water car. Yeah? There you go. I mean, who could, who could resist that? Um, I, I just want to bring up, since you're such a fan of Jeff Bridges. Oh, yes, you the did. The dude. Have, yep. And, and there's, a, there's a film that... Um, was made by his father. His father was famous, of course, for SeaWorld, which was sort of half underwater. They oh, were always, sure. you know, diving. Um, it's called Around the World Under the Sea, and it's it's a little five-man sub that travels around. I don't, I'm not clear on, on exactly what they were doing, poster. but they were planting sensors to um, warn of, of future earthquakes. And it's got David McCallum in it, which is always fun. Uh, I'm not sure what the conflicts are in this story. I have not seen it myself. I'm going to put it on my list. That yeah. is, that's definitely one that I would definitely check out. It's got a great poster. Yeah, that's for sure. Dave, thank you so much for joining us on the couch today, talking about all things maritime aquarium, pumpkins. And water. <laughs> always my pleasure. And under the sea. Yeah, water is always a good thing to talk about. And thank you for having me. Keeps it. us alive, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah.
And that concludes today's show. We'll come back next week and talk about our favorite horror movies in preparation of Halloween, of course. And we'll see you next week for the couch on the HA Network. Bye.